Welcome to another video using Onshape. Uh, in this video, we're going to go through the mounting bracket for the Mass Properties activity. We'll go ahead and activate my Mass Props folder and create a new blank document called Mounting Bracket. Just as I've done before, I am going to start off with a solid chunk as my raw stock, and I'll put everything else in as a cut. Uh, so I'm going to do a new sketch on the front view. Go ahead and straighten it up. I'm going to put a two-point rectangle coming off of the origin out into the field somewhere. If I interpret my part, I can see that I have five inches total width and one and a half inch total height. So I'll go ahead and type in five, enter, and one and a half, enter. Everything should turn black. It's fully constrained. We can accept that sketch and put it back into isometric. I am going to go ahead and turn off all of my work features. And I'll do an extrusion. How much? Um, I'm going to pick the main part. I interpret it, and it looks like I have a full depth for my extrusion of 3 inches. So I'll go ahead and do a blind depth of 3. Hit enter. It looks good. I'll go ahead and accept that extrusion. Okay, the rest of it's kind of up to you on what order you do things in. Um, I want to get rid of this main chunk that's here. So I'm going to put a new sketch on the right-hand side. Square it up. Zoom out just a little bit, and I'm going to do a coincident for my rectangle on the top and then down here somewhere. Um, I actually don't know its width or height. Um, I guess I could kind of figure it out, but I'm going to use the dimensions that they've got. So I'm going to use the dimension tool, and most of the time I have good luck picking the outside and then my line, but every once in a while it gets picky about that. So let's see if it likes it. So I'm going to pick the outside edge and then my edge, and that's fine. Um, if you ever have trouble with it, pick your stuff first. So if I pick the geometry of the rectangles, get my dimension tool, grab my rectangle, and then the outside edge, um, then it usually likes it. So I can look at the part, and I see that it's a half inch on both sides. So 0.5, enter, then I'll come from my line to the outside line, and we'll do another half inch. Okay, height. Um, there really is no dimension here. I just go around. Oh, I can see that this bottom plate where the chamfers meet, um, which comes to this edge, looks like it's down 3 quarters of an inch from the top surface. So I'll grab my dimension tool, and that gives us 0.75. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and put it isometric. It's all black. Accept the sketch. Extrude. Pick our little shape, and do a remove. Change it from blind to through all. Awesome. Go ahead and accept that, and now we're going to go ahead and do the hole. There's a lot of different ways to do the hole. I could do it with a circle um, and extrude. I'd like to try to figure out this hole tool, so I'm going to see if I can't figure it out. So I'm going to put a new sketch in this surface somewhere. Go ahead and look at it from the top. And I'm going to put a point somewhere-ish in the middle of the part. I'm going to use my dimension tool. And if I look, I am two and a half inches from this right edge into the, where my circle is going to be. So I'll use a dimension and come from, again, I'm going to pick mine first. So I'm going to pick that and then come out to this outside edge. And it was two and a half. Inside this is an illusion. Uh, looks like it says one inch from the outside. It's really just one inch from the inside um, because this wall is a half. One plus a half gives me one and a half, which puts it in the middle. So I can do it from the outside wall in of a one and a half, or I can just do what they've got and go from my point to the wall and put in one inch, and it should put it in the middle. Okay, so regardless, everything is black. I've got the dot exactly where I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the sketch put an isometric, and I'm going to try the hole tool. So I pick the hole tool, um, a simple hole, that's what I want, through, that's what I want. Uh, it looks like I can change to a couple different kinds of holes, um, and I can do blind hole, and so on. So I do want it to go all the way through. I want it to be that as my center point. Great, that did what I wanted. And it looks like I have a diameter of one inch, which just happens to be the default in the software. So great. So I'll go ahead and accept that, and that's done. All right, let's go ahead and knock off these two little bottom corners. So I'll do a new sketch on here. I'm going to straighten it up, and I just want a chance to use another tool. So I'm going to use the mirror. So I'm going to grab a rectangle, and I'm only going to work on one corner. I'm going to let the software try to do the other corner for me. So let's see if we can't find some dimensions. All right, so looks like 0.625 is the size of one of them. Um, I'm going to pull up my calculator real quick, and I want to make sure that they're the same on both sides. So I've got 5 inches total, minus 3.75, which is the big chunk in the middle, 
minus 0.625. And if I hit enter and it gets up 0.625, it does, then they're the same on both sides. Okay, so we can use mirror. So I'm gonna put on a general dimension that that is 0.625 from the edge. Okay, so height. This is really a strange looking picture. It looks like it says that it's half an inch, but that half inch, you really have to look and pay attention to the arrows that are there. So I've got 0.75 from the top and then an additional 0.5 to get down to here. So um, on shape is also a calculator. So rather than me doing the math, I'm just gonna click on the top, click on my line. And again, if it doesn't like that, then do it backwards. Click on your line and then click on the top. I'm just gonna add two dimensions together. I'm going to add the 0.75 plus the 0.5 and hit enter, and it's going to figure it out for me. So one and a quarter. There we go. I'm now going to go ahead and draw a line dead smack in the middle. So I'm going to hover over there until that little box pops up. So there's a midpoint and then another midpoint. And that's just my line. I'm going to use it for mirroring. So I'm going to go ahead and hide its visibility or make it a construction line. Okay, so it's there, but not there as far as the features are concerned. Okay, so why did I do that? I want to use this mirror tool. In the mirror tool, I can highlight the tool. I can pick everything that I want to mirror. Actually, oh, it's backwards in this one. So I highlight the tool, and it wants me to select the mirror line first. And that's different than some other software packages, so be careful. So I'm going to select the mirror line, boom, and then it says select the entities to be mirrored. Okay, so now I can highlight everything from here to here. And it, wow, it just did it. Um, I didn't have to hit OK or anything. It just automatically popped it over there. So that's pretty easy to do. Um, looks like it's got everything. So everything is black. I've already got that as a construction line. Fine. It's kind of cool if you hover over these, you can actually see that that's a symmetry little icon that's popping up um, to show that it's been mirrored. So regardless, whatever. I'll finish that sketch. Uh, we'll put an isometric extrude. We're going to pick both of the little ones, remove, and through all. All right, we're almost done. We need to put these big chamfers on there. Um, I know they're at a 30 degree. I know they're 0.75 down. Um, we can do it one of two ways. We can actually just draw it um, as an angle and cut it off. We can even do a mirror again, um, or we could try to use the chamfer tool. The, the chamfer tool does have equal distance, distance and angle, and two distances. Let's give it a try. I'm actually going to do it both ways. So let's try the chamfer first. Okay, so we want this edge and that edge. I want the distance to be 0.75. That's going to be the down distance. And we're at a 30 degree. So that doesn't look right. So I'm going to flip this little arrow to see if it doesn't swap it. No, so that's not doing it exactly correct. So it's 30 degrees and then three quarters down. I don't know what this distance is here. I'd have to do some math to figure that out. And that doesn't swap it the way that I want. So I'm sure the chamfer tool is going to work. I'm just going to change that out and I'm just going to draw them. So I'm just going to do a new sketch on here. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line on there. All right, sweet. So now this is going to be really easy because I can see it proportionally. So I'm just going to click once click twice and three times so that's the 0.75 and then I can put on my 30 degrees just like theirs is so that I can make it match the picture pretty easy so click once click twice make my 30 degrees everything is black let's throw a line in the middle and we probably could have done all of this in the last sketch and just extruded all of these at the same time but regardless okay so let's do a mirror select the line first and then our geometry that we want to send over that's it, everything is black. Um, we'll put it back in isometric, extrude, pick our two shapes, remove, and all. Sweet, that's it. So now we need to go ahead and make it stainless steel. So I'll click on the part, I'm going to right click on it, and I'm gonna assign the material. So I'll come in here to none, and I'm gonna type in, oh, I already have stainless here, but there's a whole bunch of different stainlesses. Is there one that just says, uh, let's type in stainless. Oops. So it's now narrowed down everything that's different kinds of stainless. Oops, I lost it. So there we go. So we have 
I'm going to choose the one that says just stainless steel and doesn't have anything else attached to it. So this one here, density 2.796, and that's the stainless that I'm going to use. So now I can check my eye properties for the finish part. I can use my rollback, and I can roll that back to the beginning for my final extrusion. I can look at the eye properties there, my, uh, my mass properties. So there you go. That is the mounting bracket.